It's been very cold. Having a onesie on, I didn't anticipate wearing this week, but I need to stay warm. So the best way to stay warm is, besides blanket, is just to wrap myself up in a fuzzy onesie. <laughs> so I'm Stitch for now. <laughs> a stitch on Twitch. Tonight, we'll actually just be focusing on Judy's scenes, replaying back and forth, stopping in between. So I just wanted to give that disclaimer today that this is not going to be your typical cyberpunk stream. It's a photography walkthrough. It's like going on a photography shoot in the in the cyberpunk world. The tools that I'll be using tonight, Reshade is a generic post-processing injector for games and video software developed by Crosshair. Imagine your favorite game with ambient occlusion, real depth of field effects, color correction, and more. Reshade exposes an automated and generic way to access both frame, color, and depth information. Ladder is automatically disabled during multiplayer prevent exploitation and all the tools to make it happen. It's immense of amount of shaders, presets, LUTs, any sort of adjustments that you normally would see on Photoshop Lightroom, any of those are actually now added into Reshade or it's possible using this program. So Reshade has many, many purposes. What I've discovered with Reshade is you can restore a 2010 video game that didn't actually have these technology at that time, be able to implement it into the game depending on the API that the game is playing on. Reshade does recognize majority of the APIs out there. So for example, Vulkan, Direct x12 direct x11 direct x10 and those particular one goes all the way back at modern warfare of call of duty you can even play that far as well i've watched a few videos about that and oh my god it is amazing what that technology was able to do in 2010 or even 2009 what we can bring in of a 2020 technology so that's just an example of a game check it out on youtube it's incredible to um to see the works of what reshade can do possibly for the game. So you can experience those games again in a totally different way, in a way that you want to experience it. One example you should totally check out when you got the time, pull up Reshade Breath of the Wild. It acts like it's the game is ray traced. It's implemented beautifully. I think it has like 1.5 million views on that video. So that's just one of the program that I'll be using that injects into the game. Another interjectable generic camera system, which is used as a base for cameras for taking screenshots within games. The main purpose of the system is to hijack 3D camera by overriding values in its camera structure with our own values so we can control where the camera is located. It's pitch, yaw, roll values, it's FOV, and the camera's look vector. Some camera implementations have additional features like time stop. It's written in C++ with some x86x64 assemblers to be able to intercept the location of the 3D camera in the game. The system is initially designed for 64-bit host of, as all games are 64-bit nowadays, but has been reworked to be used for 32-bit games too. Let's see what I can capture with this scene. So what I'm attempting to create here is your character can pose in many, many different actions and expressions, and you can even move your character closer to to whatever the hell you want it to be positioned at. Let me get closer. I think that's about as close as I can get. Maybe. Hold on. And then... Let me pick some... <laughs> I don't need to do all that fun stuff, but... There is a pose that she is... Ha she has her gun. And there's a muzzle flash. Ooh, that might actually help. There ain't no other light besides what's above and behind her, which I wish that she would be, let's say, this is what I wish. She can sit down and drink her drink in front of the bar, but she's more so looking out into the crowd. If this was a crowd, but right now it's just nobody in there. So I'm going to use this flash to eliminate her. Ha! Now that's what's cool about this, but let me go closer and just... Maybe try to get her drinking again, because I like her drinking pose. No, don't look at me. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? <laughs> they see my ass coming up to them. It's like, what do you want? So I'm going to use this revolver and turn on the muzzle flash. Move closer to Judy. Or get your ass closer to her. There. Uh... Move closer to Judy. 
And that's crazy that it actually reacts to my movement or when I'm moving my character V. So when I move it away, the light is no longer on her. It's just going to be what's in front of me. I need to get even closer. I feel this is a pretty satisfying lighting to me. It's eliminated Judy. It feels like I'm in a nightclub and I got the perfect shot of Judy just staring straight at me. When I saw that you can rotate the camera itself in the game, yes, it does put into this perspective that you really can't see at all. I would have to rotate my own neck just like Busta Rhyme. Just don't break your neck. <laughs> <laughs> rotate my neck just to see if this is the money shot she looks kind of pissed off at me but whatever then move closer so vanilla mode what out the vanilla mode i feel satisfied with this so let's start the editing process so let's do 15. now when it comes to the these other parameters i leave that alone it does actually a good job of the sharpness because we're going to add sharpening effects and reshaders also that's um, available to use so with um with the amd fidelity fx contrast adaptive sharpening when amd announced and released the fidelity fx on their graphics card it also brought it down to the 580 rx and the 570 so you can actually do that actually doesn't impact your performances so few artifacts a less subtle performance or even a little little performance impact because it actually knows how to sharpen area that needs sharpening and areas that don't need sharpening doesn't impact the game. I actually do use that in the AMD drivers itself in the adrenaline software and just manually tune it to 69. I do activate it in here too to get just a few more smidget of sharpness, which will add more into the game. HDR. Let's see what I can do with HDR. So HDR is high dynamic range. I like to actually tune and change the power of the HDR setting and make it probably kind of darken that because I can then change the radius a bit more closely too. So I can either increase it to where it's brightened or decrease it where it's not. For this case here, I want to actually eliminate her skin tone and her face as good as possible. This particular shader actually adds um, more or depthness and to the areas that are lacking that shadow so it actually responds to like almost like ray tracing so whenever there's hair over someone's face there has to be at least shadows underneath that so this activate that to give it a more true representation of what what the scene captures here remove intent it's really basically removing the since it's mostly blue it actually does help with improving the, the tint on here minimal color grading i do use this a lot and i keep this open and activated to their scene so i applied a lut on to my game in general just to have a nice cinematic outlook in the game it is light depth of field huh. she's blurred out no i don't want that to happen let's add uh these guys are actually like automatic adjustment automatic does a good job at determining what the contrast is going to be or what the color is going to be like so you can see that it went from like very cool to where it knows that i'm gonna go warmer so now her, her skin tone doesn't look too dead she looks more alive in this shot you can make it oh where it's too much sharpness look what happened to her skin it's like way too much artifacts on there to taking it off completely four and after and that from that point on i have my screenshot capture button as f4 you can do whatever you like then it gets saved into the album so it will capture in this in this rotated shot here initially but you can always totally just rotate it within newly shot of judy that i haven't seen anybody done yet so it's just one of the aspects that you can definitely use the tool to capture a particular scene, a particular character from a totally different perspective that you normally don't get to see. So it's, it's just really cool that I, I can do that. So that's just one shot there. I'm going to get closer to her. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Get closer to her. Not that bad. I actually like this shot right here, which I will still keep it. So it's actually okay, but I'm going to take off some of the sharpening because I don't need to add too much to it. And do this snapshot and call that good. Now that's a lot of Judy shot and just one. I haven't even got to the point where we're actually meeting her in person yet. I've only gotten her before the meeting. So I'm not even to that point. But that's fine. You know, it's, it's, it's the ability to capture a character in a totally different viewpoint that I can do this in. So I like doing that. I definitely want to see her interaction. So this might be my last, not the angle here, but just maybe the last attempt at getting this 
really gorgeous shot of her. I love the shot of her. Boom. I think that's the money shot in this scene here. And I'll show you the money shot. I'm pretty satisfied. I think that one's okay. It's the like, camera angle is a little awkward to me. And she looks just bored there. That seems better. You can actually see more of her detail of her tattoos. It's a bit close up too. And that one's actually not that bad. Is any of this kind of helping you understand what I'm talking about? Photography is about mostly like about the post-processing, but now it's more about the technique of the capture that I just implemented there. So by going into the actual rotation and portrait, instead of doing a horizontal capture and then cropping it into a portrait canvas, I'm doing this to actually get and utilize the technique of, of Judy's capture. So in a portrait shot, there is a, there's a terminology called golden spiral. You can see the, the spiral actually starts weaving out from here. This is the golden spiral. It's her eye. It's what draws you into her. She's in her zone. Let's see what, how can I capture her in this mode? Cause I've seen many shots of, and I've done this myself too, where I get shots of her sitting like that portrait style. Now I can actually get her full body shot on the table and POV. Let's go ahead and change that perspective going forward. Kind of have to twist your neck for this. Sorry about that guys, but that's just how the game rotates in. It just doesn't automatically switch to this <laughs> switch to a mode where you can just like see it perfectly in that angle. I have to like imagine it the rest of it the way, but okay. the types of photography I do for portrait is actually in a style called environmental portraiture. So an environmental portrait is a portrait executed in the subject's usual and usual environment, such as in their home or workplace and typically eliminates the subject's life and surroundings. The term is mostly frequently used as a genre of photography. So by photographing a person in their natural surroundings, it is thought that you will be able to better eliminate their character and therefore portray the essence of their personality rather than a merely of likeness of the physical features. It is also thought that by photographing a person in their natural surroundings, the subject will be more at ease. So be more conducive to expressing themselves as opposed to in a studio, which can be rather intimidating and artificial experience. So now we're actually in the element of Judy. This is her environment. This is her workspace. This is her, her baby. She has all the tech and computer and savviness. She's the best brain dance in the whole damn city. You're there to do this job. You're in her home. So don't fuck shit up. Don't piss her off or do anything. Basically hurt her. Luckily in this shot here, at the moment, not, we're not, yet, not yet. We're not disrupting her. We're actually just capturing her in her element. Point of view that can actually capture her in her zone that feels like photographic too. So the two techniques I always typically, I just use automatically is the rule of thirds, then the golden spiral. What I do like about this angle here is her shoe is eliminated and you can get a glimpse of what that elimination is coming from. This is a good shot. Um, I will see if this could work. Maybe I'll zoom in a bit more, which actually turns the turns it from a wide angle to about potentially a 70 millimeter lens like squeeze in her and then like tunes out the background i like that shot add some depth of field to that let's see how well it implements a depth of field in here <laughs> not bad not bad okay so that was actually the hope what depth of the depth of field is going to do for me so it does it automatically or does it auto focus for me so with the the adaptive depth of field it actually blurred out what's behind her and her chair still kept in focus of her foot and her legs here and her in focus so good job depth of field good job thanks for always being reliable for me now ambient light can work in here and it will actually work to an extent but go ahead and turn on the threshold and the intensity of it either reduce it or increase the intensity in this case it may just slightly increase it since the room is actually eliminated by her by various light sources coming from her monitor and then coming right behind her too but those are so far away that it doesn't impact the image act actually at all or impact her what does that look like now? Go ahead and show ya. Or let me get my damn. I love that. Okay. I love it. That's beautiful. So for this here, I'm actually going to utilize 
the illuminated chair directly behind her. I'm trying to get into her thoughts. Now that's another environmental portraiture shot that is not always about the subject looking at you or looking away from you. I mean, in this case, yes, yeah, she is looking away, but she is in the zone right now. And this is absolutely a fine shot too. So vanilla look, which is still beautiful and just a small smidget enhancement. It may have definitely blown her her eyes there, so I might have to totally tone that down. Let's get that liquid lens on. Vanilla look, enhanced look. Vanilla look, enhanced look. Catch that. Jeez, this game has so much detail. That's another technique of the golden spiral plus the rule of thirds. And subject is actually not in the center. It's actually to the right of the frame. This has been fun for me to do um, to capture photography, to utilize my technique and skill. The, the skills and techniques that I've developed. So I'm happy to explore photography again using virtual, using the genre of virtual photography to explore it and then to capture it with the video game I'm like very passionate for. And on a subject of a character I actually feel the most I resonate with. Um, as as I progress into our my time with Judy and capturing her and also like once again going through her story, I have a lot to say about who she is and her sexuality and the way she's represented and why there's so much there's a lot of discussion around her sexuality. One, she is a very gorgeous person. So two, then it's society pushes that notion like, okay, an attractive woman, this attractive is gay. Huh? No way. <laughs> so, well, I'll get into that discussion later. But for now, um, the focus is all about the art and the subject is Judy and who she is and who she represents to in the game who she represents to us so i'm just happy to to share my knowledge and and share my skill to capture some like unique parts of judy that the photo mode can only give you so much to do and by doing that i just want to share this with a lot of people out there who can see judy in a different light so i just want to say thank you for tuning in and um hanging out with me and coming in and out and stuff so I, I appreciate the hell out of you guys for hanging out with me <laughs>